my name is Kate Ford. I am 47, that's the truth. Um, I'm a mother of two children, a 10-year-old um, boy and a 12-year-old girl. I run a, a single parenting organisation. Nice. I'm a former regular fund manager, okay. just um, UK Institutional Equity Fund Manager, city background, business degree. I understand no drugs to be a project that's looking at the approach that we have to drugs in the UK and the, the perception that it is very uh, black and white and unrealistic with what actually goes on in society. Illegal and legal drugs are such different things that I don't think you can have them in a blanket group. I mean, drugs are any substance that alters your bodily function. So drugs are basically everything. So, you know, I, th I think you have to be careful that you're talking about the right sort of drugs because you've got prescription drugs, you've got a cup of coffee. I mean, it's basically everything is a drug because everything affects your body. As far as legal and illegal drugs, that's really where my big distinction lies. This is a very basic, simple philosophy that I have that has been passed down to me by my parents and I think is right and I will be passing it on to my children. Illegal drugs are unregulated. You don't know what they're going to do to your brain. You don't know what you're taking. You don't know whether you're going to be predisposed to psychosis. You don't know whether you're going to be predisposed to addiction. You don't know what it's going to do to your brain and you've only got one brain and you want to live 80 years with mental health. You want to be happy. And I don't think a good disco dance on a Saturday night is worth the risk. It's just not worth it. I became aware of legal drugs. My mother smoked. Uh, my parents, I was brought up in the 60s. My parents had a, had a rare old time with the pink gin. You know, not in, a, not in a way that went out of control, but I was very aware of smoking and alcohol. It was part of what went on in our family. I became aware of illegal drugs probably when I was 12, 12 or 13. Um, and I, my introduction to drugs by my father, who's a doctor, um, was very extreme. And I, I was at a school where there was a, a, a drug issue and my father became involved in that with the school and fed us down to the message that don't do it. There was no uh, liberal discussion about various things that people took and I was terrified of them because for me it only led to one thing, death. Alcohol is something that I've been brought up with. You know, why do I play cards? Me and my family have always played cards together. It's a part of our culture. I was introduced to uh, Baby Sham when I was 14, hated it. Um, but as you know, I was drinking Baileys, had a Baileys at 18, nice sweet taste, and got on to drink wine, gone through a gin and tonic phase. But, and it's something that we did at home with my parents, with my grandparents. It's something that we do socially. So when it was university, phew, I was not a thing did I ever take. So when you were around people, were you around people taking illegal drugs at university? Yes, what, not much. What I, drugs were they taking? I haven't a clue. I, I haven't. They weren't doing anything that involved them um, injecting themselves. They were probably spliffs. I haven't a clue what was in there. Were they smoking them? Yes. <laughs> so you see. Okay. So. Um, first of all, let's just talk about cannabis. Do you know what cannabis looks like? No. Any guess? Tobacco. Green. More like tobacco and a dried herb. Okay, and how would you take cannabis? Uh, you'd smoke it. In, maybe even you'd mix it up with some um, tobacco. That's what I imagine. Ecstasy is a little pill, right? that clubbers take and um, it makes them feel high and um, but what do I really think about ecstasy? They don't know what's in it. That's what I really think about ecstasy. So yeah, my mate, but they don't know what's in it. You don't know what's in it 
I don't know what's in it. I don't know what effect it's going to have on my brain, your brain. Don't go there. So there's no safety nets around that. Why do I think so many people take ecstasy? Oh God, I don't know why. I don't know why people drink a litre of vodka before they go out. I don't know why. I think there's something rather sad, actually. I mean, the reason you take these drugs is to get a bit of a, to get a bit of pleasure. So the things that I would like, to, or, or you're bored, or you want a bit of a kick, whatever. I know this is where I do sound like an old lady. I can't believe you're not going to have more fun having a laugh. Or dancing, or singing. Why you would think that a little pill... I think it's a bit sad, actually. I honestly think it's a bit sad that so many people do think they're going to have a better Saturday night if they put something into their body. They don't know whether they're going to be drinking 10 litres of water and they don't know whether they're going to be the one in a million that ends up dead. They don't know that. The one thing you want to avoid is mental illness. The one thing you don't want to bugger about with is your brain. I think children are susceptible when they're growing up, when they're vulnerable, when they're weak. That's when their brain's developing. So I really don't want them doing it when their brain's developing. I say, well, you know, the way our brains work, we've got neurons flying all over the place, right? Neurons flying all over the place. We don't know how these connections work. Our brains are so complicated. They're growing, they're developing. These, you know, these things are happening. What on earth would you want to take something that could bugger about with that such that you end up with mental illness. And depression for me is the absolute bottom. I think to wake up and be unmotivated, to be miserable, to find it difficult to have it, I think it must just be terrible. So to actually inflict that on yourself when you don't need to, I think is, 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 is mindless. I would suspect they'd only tell me if it became a problem. No, does, that doesn't bother me particularly. Are you at all afraid that if they are using it, there might be sort of a barrier between you and them? No, they, the children don't tell, talk to their parents about everything. I don't think I talk to my parents about everything. I don't think there's a need for, for, for children to talk to their parents about everything. They probably won't tell me because they think I'll disprove, and I will disprove. What's your alcohol usage like? Not good. What do you mean by that? Um, I drink, this, these are my rules, two days a week off, I never drink twice a day. And I have a threshold whereby after a certain amount of alcohol I will either fall asleep or be sick. I mean, I, I, I don't get blind drunk because I didn't start drinking till I was quite old. I don't know whether it's a phys physiological thing or not, but I do, I do like to drink. How much alcohol do you, would you say you drink um, a week? How many units? Well, so, probably, what, there's a, how much is there in a one? A glass of wine, a small glass of wine is one unit. Fifteen. Fifteen units of alcohol a week. Is that, is that too much? Yeah, I reckon I do have fifteen, is that terrible? So you would drink... Two would glasses drink a night. Two, two small glasses of wine a night. With two nights off, which means five nights a week I'm having... Some nights a week I have one, some nights a week I have none. I probably never have more than three. Except when you're socialising. But that would have to be a party that went on. And I probably don't do that. I don't ever, I can't drink and, t and keep going on and on and on. I can't, I just feel terrible. I've seen you drink a lot more than three years. <laughs> Yes, no, you haven't. I get giddy I'm after. I'm in denial at the moment. You're, not, you're the one that, that says you can tell as soon as I've drunk anything. So if you were having dinner with a friend, how many bottles of wine would one. you get through? One. Would never be two. Okay, but maybe at a party it might be more. I, 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 honestly, don't, I honestly think I'd be sick after a bottle of wine. Twenty. Twenty units a week. I'll do a chart for you and let you know. I have a drink. I have a drink at points of extreme stress. And I think that a bit is of a Pavlovian dog reaction, to be honest. Because I don't put the kettle on when I'm stressed. I'm sure some people do. So if something really terrible happens, I'll have a glass of wine. And other than that, it will be at a point of the day that I start, that I wish to unwind. It's almost, and when my children were small, 
it was when they went to bed and I'd come down the stairs. Now it's when I sort of clock off duty. It is, and, I, and because they don't go to bed till I go to bed now, I clock off duty probably when I've finished homework. So I clock off duty at eight o'clock. What effect does it have on you when you have the glass of wine? A glass of wine makes me feel a bit giddy. I, I, I wouldn't like to drink after a glass of, a drive after a glass of wine. But, uh, so it definitely makes me feel different. Um, but then, on my two days a week, which I do have to make myself do, I make a cup of tea at that point, and I enjoy my cup of tea as well. So I think there is an awful lot of habit involved in my wine. I don't smoke. I haven't smoked for a, for a year or so. I've seen you smoke in the last year. Every now and again, I get weak and I have one. Okay, that is... I don't smoke. I don't think smoke, uh, alcohol damages my body in the same way as smoking does. Why not? Well, I just don't. You see, you can't compare drugs in that way because you compare, you, you're not using a, a control test that has any meaning. More people die of alcohol than many, many, many other things. Probably, probably the biggest killer of anything second to road traffic, I don't know. So you don't think you can compare how harmful one substance is with how no. harmful another one is? No, I honestly don't. That's why, that's why you know, if, if people say, oh, more people die, 55 billion times more people die from alcohol than XTX every year, I, th I think they are meaningless statistics to compare with each other. One is a legal regulated substance. I know what I'm putting into my body. I made an informed decision. And I, have a, ha, I know what the effect's going to be. It's ecstasy. I do not know. It is illegal. I do not know whether I am putting a tab of Dettol in my body. That is the big difference between legal and illegal drugs. You know, the amount that I drink and my parents drink is not damaging to my health. Potentially, one ecstasy pill is. So it's sort of comparing apples and pears. So if you took ecstasy as a youth and you managed to dodge the bullet, I would imagine that you wake up when you're a parent, feel pretty lucky. And I wouldn't think you'd want your children to be doing it. That's too hypothetical to even consider. That is too hypothetical an issue to consider. So it went through all the FDA tests. It went through all FDA approval tests to prove that um, 20 years hence, XT drug user. It went through the same rigorous process that things that have to be legally approved go through. If for some, well, it would never happen anyway. If it did. If it did, and it was proven that ecstasy was, yeah. I mean, that's a completely different thing, isn't it? I think the likelihood of illegal drugs being legalised is zero, absolutely zero. I think there are a million better things to do. I think there's a million better ways of getting to the problem of why people feel they need to use substances to make themselves feel happier. I would, I would spend the billions of pounds on that, on, on, on making esteem a bigger thing, of getting teaching right, of getting children more grounded. I, would, I, I really think there are billions and billions of better things to, 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 to focus energy on than legalising something else that produces a chemical high that is equivalent to a biological high that you can, that, you know, to, to enhance quality of life. I think it's crap. Since I was a girl, advertising has changed radically with regard to all drugs. Taxation has changed radically with you know, to all legal drugs. Um, I think the media coverage, you see, I don't have a problem with the media coverage portraying drugs in an extremely frightening, negative way. I don't have a problem with the fact that we hear about the one person that dies of ecstasy and we don't hear about the 200 having a lovely time. That doesn't bother me at all. I think the media, I've got it, I, I really think the media, okay, take parenting. The media, I think, it drip feeds insecurity to everybody at every basic level. And 
you know, it's sensational. So, so say Madeleine McCann. Yeah. The chance of your child being abducted, zippo. Read the media, everybody's up feared about it. You cannot get away from the fact that you do not know what is in an ecstasy tablet. You can't get away from that fact. So that's the beginning, middle and end. The government's role should be, I think, to go to the root causes. And the trouble with government is that because they work for a four year political cycle, some of the things that are sort of the root causes are big, big problems that are generational. We've got the big problem of, of the way we live these days. It could be that this is all the fault of, um, of, of, you know, splattered families. It could, who knows what it's a fault of. But at the fact, that at the end of the day, we get to a point where we feel in such a state that we need to drink more, smoke more, take illegal drugs. That's not, you shouldn't think, oh, let, well, let's make them legal. Oh, because people are taking them. That's fine. Let's make them legal. I would spend more of my time having a discussion about why people feel the need to do it. All illegal drugs do something to your brain. And it could be that you're in a certain situation with a certain condition whereby a certain illegal drug makes you feel better. But most illegal drugs have a prescribed legal equivalent that does the same thing. I always feel sorry for the folks with multiple sclerosis that like a bit of cannabis, though. <laughs> do you know? I do, but, but you know, but you, but you see, the whole point about law and opinions is it's a normal curve. You've got to get most people in it. So although I feel sorry for the few folk, I can't have policy determined by the exception. drugs to be a project that's looking at the approach that we have to drugs in the UK and the the perception that it is very uh, black and white and unrealistic with what actually goes on in society. Illegal and legal drugs are such different things that I don't think you can have My name is Kate Ford. I am 47. And that's the truth. Um, I'm a mother of two children, a 10 year old um, boy and a 12 year old girl. I run a, a single parenting organisation. Nice. I'm a former regular fund manager, okay, so just um, UK institutional equity fund manager, city background, business degree. I understand no them in a blanket group. I mean, drugs are any substance that alters your bodily function. So drugs are basically everything. So, you know, I, th I think you have to be careful that you're talking about the right sort of drugs because you've got prescription drugs, you've got a cup of coffee. I mean, it's basically everything is a drug because everything affects your body. As far as legal and illegal drugs, that's really where my big distinction lies. Which is a very basic, simple philosophy that I have that has been passed down to me by my parents and I think is right and I will be passing it on to my children. Illegal drugs are unregulated. You don't know what they're going to do to your brain. You don't know what you're taking. You don't know whether you're going to be predisposed to psychosis. You don't know whether you're going to be predisposed to addiction. You don't know what it's going to do to your brain and you've only got one brain and you want to live 80 years with mental health. You want to be happy. And I don't think a good disco dance on a Saturday night is worth the risk. It's just not worth it. I became aware.